Welcome to the Great Deception chap uh, lesson number four. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on seduce. So, seduce has a sexual connotation, but it also has a spiritual connotation in the Word of God, the Scriptures. So, let's take a look at, uh, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 21. All right, 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibal, oh, something like that. And he did that which was evil, evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places, which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. You know, that's the thing. They always try to, they're always building that little stairway to heaven. They're building the high places. All right. I don't know exactly 100% why they do that, but that's what they like to do. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, B-A-A-L, Baal, Baal, and made a grove. Now, something you don't know, the witches, the Wiccans, whatever, they love to be around Mother Nature and Gaia, Mother Earth. So they, um, they love to be in the groves, a grove of trees. It, uh, that's just what they do. They think there's something sacred about it. And made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel. Now this guy, uh, Manasseh, is the king of Judah whose capital was Jerusalem, but Ahab was king of Israel. They're not the same. But Ahab, oh, he was a really bad one. Really bad. And he had a wife named Jezebel. And she's very famous, Jezebel. You ever heard of somebody putting down a woman and say, oh, she's a Jezebel? Oh, yeah. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. What's the host of heaven? The fallen angels. So he was serving the devils, plural. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said in Jerusalem will I put my name. So here it is, he's built a, a, he made a mockery of the Lord's house. It's like a bunch of Satanists breaking into a church in the middle of the night and setting it up an altar of Satan there. Not a good thing. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire. He burned his own son alive as a burnt sacrifice to Satan. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards and Harry Potter. I'm, I'm sorry, not Harry Potter. That's the Bob translation. So he observed times, he used enchantments, which is casting spells, and dealt with familiar spirits, 
devils, and wizards, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set up a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land, which I gave their fathers, only if, only if, and that didn't happen, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my, that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, in other words, they didn't listen, but they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. You know the uh, satanic, evil, wicked people that were in the land that the Lord destroyed to allow Israel to go in? They were even worse than they were. And the Lord spake by his servants the prophet, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, hath done these abominations, you know, there's not a lot of things that the Lord calls abominations. But I tell you what, when you do abominations, things that, an abomination is something God, that God really, 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 really hates. Did I say that correctly? Something he really, really hates? Okay. Because Manasseh, king of Judah, hath done these abominations and hath done wickedly above all, all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. What's an idol? It's not God. You know, when you go to like New York City, they got gargoyles on a lot, a whole lot of buildings. Gargoyles. They look like winged devils. I mean, can you imagine somebody setting up a gargoyle and people worshiping it? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. You know what happens when you take a plate that has something and you wipe it clean and then you turn it upside down? There ain't nothing left on that plate. And that's what God's going to do to Jerusalem. He's going to wipe it clean. Verse 14. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey, P-R-E-Y, not a not prey, not to pray to God in a prayer, uh-uh, a prey. When an eagle swoops down and catches a rabbit by the back of the neck with its talons, its claws, the rabbit became a prey. You got predators and you got prey. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand, hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another besides his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Oh boy. I don't think I'd want to read that book. That's considered one of those lost books of the Bible. 
a lot of people look for that kind of stuff, but you know what? If it's not in the King James, I, I wouldn't worry about it. And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon, Ammon his son, reigned in his, stand, in his stead. Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulemeth, the daughter of Haruz of Jotba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and worshipped, I'm sorry, walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. And the servants Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his sepulcher in the daughter of in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah his son reigned in his stead. Now, a lot of you may not know it, but Josiah was a good king. He was a really good king. Matter of fact, the Lord raised him up probably to be the last good king, because uh, not long after this, Babylon comes along and takes Judah captive, takes him to Babylon. Lord's like, oh, hey, you don't want me for a king? No problem. You can have Nebuchadnezzar as a king. How do you like them apples? In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26, we read, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. Turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to go to verse 1. Uh, Paul wrote this book to Timothy, a young pastor. This is one of the pastoral epistles or letters. In other words, a, a letter for the pastors. And Paul's going to give Timothy a some warnings about the last days. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. In the last days, it's going to be dangerous, right? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, which means they're going to be greedy, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Sounds like the headlines in the newspaper. Without natural affection. Sounds like homosexuality to me. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Incontinent, that's interesting. Do you know what it means to be incontinent? It means uh, you, uh, well, incontinent means uh, a grown man has to wear a diaper. And in San Francisco, there's a lot of grown men that wear diapers because they abused their, that particular part of their body with other men. But I'm not sure that's exactly the, the exact meaning in this, this context. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. Are people fierce now? Oh, yeah. Despisers of those that are good. Hey, uh, if you don't believe that, just go to a Christian uh, group on Google Plus and post some things about Jesus being wonderful and and all the so-called atheists will attack you because why because they're despisers of those that are good verse 4 traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god p 
People love pleasure far more than they love the Lord. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness. That reminds me of the New Agers. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. So when you when you get the, these this group these group of people from such turn away run for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janes and Jambres withstood Moses. Now if you don't know in the book of Exodus, um, these are two men that stood against Moses. There's a story in uh, the book of Exodus where some of the people with uh, stood up against Moses' leadership. You know, God picked Moses. And uh, there was an account where the earth opened up like an earthquake. Those wicked men fell in and then the earth closed up on them, killed them. And believe it or not, they got mad at Moses. They thought he did it. Nope, it was God doing it. Now as Jennies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Boy, I tell you what, when you're a reprobate, you have, somebody that's reprobate has no chance at salvation. The Lord not only slams the door shut, he nails it shut. Nailed, shut, reprobate. But they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are you suffering persecution? Maybe you're not living godly in Christ Jesus. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Isn't that today? Deceiving and being deceived. I cannot believe all the garbage that is being taught in Bible cemeteries. I'm sorry, did I say cemetery? Um, Bible colleges, Bible seminary. Well, I was right the first time. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Do you know, it's not just Satan deceiving people. Sometimes the Lord allows people to be deceived because they loved pleasure and riches more than they loved the Lord. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Ah, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. I've been I've had to go correct things that I believed. I had to be corrected. 
for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's a wonderful, wonderful chapter. Now in Acts chapter 15, starting in verse 27, there was a dissension. Uh, some of the people said, well, you know, you need to keep Sabbath and you need to circumcision and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so it's faith in Christ plus being circumcised or faith in Christ plus, you know, keeping the Sabbath. And well, what did they say in the book of Acts? Acts 15, 27. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols. Okay? Don't, don't eat. It's a good idea not to eat meat that you know was sacrificed. Uh, that has been dedicated to Satan, okay? That you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood. You know, don't be drinking blood. How come all the TV shows are all about vampires? Have you noticed that? I mean, last 20-something years, it seems like there's been a, just a flood of vampire movies. Oh, yeah, become a vampire. Drink somebody's blood. And you're going to live forever. Uh, where do they get this garbage? Oh, that's right, the pit of hell. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled. Don't ask why, because I don't know. And from fornication. So don't eat meats offered to idols. Don't drink blood. Stay away from things that are strangled. I guess that's, you know, strangling an animal to... to kill it to eat it, and from fornication. Hey, you've, if you've got a, a girl or a boyfriend and you can't keep your hands off of them, get married. Good advice, really. And from fornication, which, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Yeah, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Stay away from meat, Meats and idols from blood strangled and from fornication. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. So, the Lord didn't like fornication back in the old days, and he still doesn't like it. But hey, if you can't keep your hands off your partner, get married. Right? Right? Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Sounds like they got a lot of good things going for them. They got good works, charity, which is sometimes translated as love. They got service, faith, patience, works. And the, the, the works at the end are even more than the beginning. That's great. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Ah, here comes the catch. Because thou sufferest, or allows, because thou sufferest that woman... Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. See, she calls herself a prophetess, not the Lord. Which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my spirit, my servants, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So is this, is this uh, physical sex? 
Is this spiritual sex or is it both? I don't know. But if, if you know, just good idea to stay away either way. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. This is the last chapter in the book of Isaiah, and it sort of kind of, Isaiah is kind of wild. It, it kind of follows the um, 66 books of the Bible. You know, this kind of follows the book of Revelation in a lot of ways. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck, he that offereth an oblation, as he if he offered swine's blood, he that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, not the Lord's ways. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. You see, these people did hey, if it feels good, do it. They didn't do what the Lord wanted them to do. They did what they wanted to do. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions. Who's going to choose their delusions? I, not me, but the Lord. What is a delusion? Well, Webster's 1828 says it's the act of deluding, a deception, deception, to deceive somebody, a misleading of the mind, a false representation, an illusion, an error or mistake proceeding from false views. Delude. It means deceiving, to be tricked, deception. I mean, wow. So let's go read Isaiah 66 and verse 4 again. The Lord says, I also will choose their delusions. So the Lord's going to trick them. He's going to deceive them. I also will choose their delusions. You see, it's not just Satan that deceives people. Sometimes the Lord deceives people. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because, ah, why? Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. They did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. You see, they when, when God called them, they wouldn't answer. They wouldn't listen. Verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. Ooh. Haven't you ever been cast out for the name's sake of the Lord? And that name is Jesus. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Payback, people. The Lord's going to repay people that are his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. 
Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. What's this talking about? I think it's talking about Mary giving birth to Christ. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will expend, extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, and ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. Do you know what indignation is? Extreme hatred. See, the Lord is love, but he also is hate. And his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Didn't we do that in another study? I think it was in study number two. The Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, a sign among them. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish. Tarshish is um, generally considered Spain. To Tarshish, Pool, and Lud that draw the bone to Tubal and Javan. Uh, Javan is generally considered Greece. There's controversy, but, you know, what can I tell you? And Javan to the isles afar off. What isles are afar off? England? Iceland? To the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel unto the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, isn't this Isaiah chapter 66 reads just like Revelation 20, 21, and 22. And didn't we read that in the book of Peter about the new heavens and the new earth? For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, 
saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an, be an abhorring unto all flesh. Do you know that there's a worm that they say lives forever? Unless you kill it and crush it, it doesn't get old. It just regenerates all its organs. I don't remember the name of the worm, but yeah, if you're kind of interested, you could, you know, uh, look it up. All right, let's go to the second chapter, second book of Thessalonians, second, second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. People call this the rapture. That's not a Bible word, but that's what people know it as. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Do you know that Judas was called the son of perdition? Well, there's going to be another son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you all these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying, lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. See, they, they were deceived with unrighteousness in them that perish, because they didn't receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They loved their sin more than anything. Verse 11. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Not Satan. God is going to delude, de, de, give them a strong delusion. He's going to deceive them. He's going to trick them. He's going to make them think that they're serving the Lord when actually they're serving the devil. Because that's what they want. They want what the devil wants. They want to serve their own pleasure. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, it's not always Satan that tricks people. You know, God doesn't deceive people that are looking for him. When you love, when you look for the Lord, when you're looking for the Lord with all your heart, you'll find him. But when you don't, when you want your sin more than anything else in the world, God will give it to you. I can show you right now homosexual sodomite churches 
in San Francisco where they will swear up and down, we're born again, we're saved, God made us this way, I'm in a committed re sodomite relationship with my lover over here. Not me, but that's what they'll say. And they're totally convinced they're saved. Uh, totally. God gives them up to a reprobate mind. God didn't make them that way. They love their sin. They love their pleasure and un their unrighteousness. They love pleasure. Let's read that again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this God cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherein, too, he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. And if you think I'm being too hard on the Sodomites, read the King James Bible in Romans chapter 1, paying particular attention to the last quarter of the paragraphs at the end. God sends people, God deludes people, he tricks them. He makes them think they're okay when, when they're in gross sin and, and reprobate minds. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 1, now the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the end times people, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. When your conscience is seared, you can't turn back. The Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord not only slams the door, he nails it shut. You're damned. It's over. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. Now, I do not believe that this verse is talking about now it's okay to eat pork. To me, eating pork is it's not a salvational issue, but pork, pigs are the sewer system. I mean, you know, you wouldn't eat, want to eat a rat. You wouldn't want to eat a vulture. Well, pigs are just as disgusting. I mean, pigs are, they're disgusting. You know, I just, I think what they're talking about here is when they're telling people don't eat uh, things that the Lord says you could eat, like like beef, like cow. Uh, believe it or not, they're doing that in India. You ever hear the expression, holy cow? Well, that's where it came from, India. Forbidding to marry. Who forbids marriage? Uh, let's see, the Catholic Church forbid, forbids their priesthood from marrying, right? Oh, yeah. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word 
of God in prayer. But, you know, still you shouldn't eat things sacrificed to, uh, meats sacrificed to idols. You know, that was in, what, the book of Acts we read? Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor, labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Now, this is Paul talking to Timothy. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You see, doctrine's important, people. Verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Well, I think that's going to be the conclusion of the Great Deception. There's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament, people, uh, especially in what they call the Minor Prophets. Those are those smaller books that are just before the New Testament. You should read it sometime. There's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament, a lot. It's well worth your time. And if you don't understand the Bible, well, read the first chapter of the book of James and pray the, pr pray the prayer of, of faith and of understanding. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. He will. Every time you read the Bible, you'll find something. You know, every time I do a Bible study, I find something that I didn't know. I mean, every single time. And uh, I don't read the Bible like I should, but, you know, uh, that's the thing about being when you're trying to teach, you know, the Lord shows you things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of scary knowing that you're going to be responsible for what you teach others. I mean, you know, TBN, those people aren't afraid. They, they have no fear of God. They really don't. I don't know how, but they don't. But, I am uh, honored that the Lord would choose me to uh, save me out of the filth of this world. Very humbled for that. Because I tell you what, there was nothing I ever did in my, my life that ever warranted the Lord having mercy upon me. I'm telling you, I never did anything worthy. I know that. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.